Okay. Ready? Okay. This is uh, practice midterm number two, question number eight. And the question is, decide if the following reaction can occur. If not, then write N, capital N, period, R, period. If the reaction will occur, then complete, balance, and name the reaction. Um, and we're given three reactions to choose from. And so option A is calcium carbonate in the solid state plus nitric acid in an aqueous solution. And so we're going to do the same thing we do with all of them. We're going to look at the outer pair and the inner pair. And we're going to check for uh, uh, the, the three possible reaction types. It can either be a metathesis process, uh, a neutralization process, uh, uh, or both of those, or a redox process. And so, I'm looking at the outer pair, I have uh, calcium, which I don't have a specific rule for, and I have nitrate ions. Well, the calcium plus two, um, it doesn't matter it's, uh, what, what it is, uh, because nitrates, all nitrates are soluble, so I'm not going to get any sort of precipitation reaction here. And I've already got a precipitate. Now I look at the inner pair, and the inner pair, I see a hydrogen ion and a carbonate ion. Well, that, that's significant because now uh, whenever you see a hydrogen ion, you want to check for a possible neutralization reaction. And so there are those seven neutralization reactions we know the net ionic equations for, and we have to check to see if one of the anions uh, present in that list is one of the anions here, and it is the carbonate ion. And we know the, to balance that one, if it's a carbonate ion, I'm going to need two hydrogen ions. So I put a 2 there, and I'm going to get CO2 gas plus H2O because essentially the proton is protonating one of the oxygens off of the carbonate ion. And there's a bond breaking and forming going on. And now, um, I'm, as well, I'm going to have to take the remaining ions and the calcium, which is group 2, so it's plus 2, and uh, got two nitrates. So uh, the molecular equation will have a calcium with combined with two nitrates, and it's going to be soluble. All nitrates are soluble. So, and that's NO3 on the nitrate. Okay, so uh, that one's pretty straightforward, and that's a neutralization reaction. So, or acid base. Either, you don't have to give both, but either response is adequate. And if it's acid base and metathesis, I would give, I would just name the acid base. The neutralization reaction would be the more significant feature. This one isn't, but uh, a lot of uh, acid base reactions are indeed double exchange as well. And so now we have uh, now option B, or problem B, where we have sodium bromide equated plus molecular chlorine, again, equated. And we're going to uh, uh, have to look into this one uh, uh, a little differently than we did the previous one because I don't have a salt here. This is molecular chlorine. And it's also one of the tells that it's possibly a redox reaction because I have something in its uh, zero oxidation state uh, as, as it occurs in nature. So I have that was going to be a trigger for a, a possible redox reaction. But it's only going to occur if the halide in, in, in question that occurs in the halogen form, because this is the halogen form of the molecular form, that is found in nature, is higher in the activity series. So the halogen has to be higher in the activity series than the halide. The halide form is the bromide ion. So if the halogen is, is higher in the activity series than the halide, 
then indeed it is going to oxidize the electrons off of the halide. And indeed this is true because chlorine occurs in the activity series and in the periodic table higher than bromine. And so it means that this, this halide, halogen is going to oxidize this halide and it's going to be a redox process. So we already know it's going to give me molecular bromine and it's going to be equated. And that's going to acquire two bromides. So now we've balanced that half of the equation. Um, plus um, uh, two sodium chlorides equation. So it's completed, it's balanced, and now we just have to name it. So I would call this redox or single. or single displacement because the reason it's called single displacement is because the um, halogen displaces the halide from solution although in fact it stays in solution but it, it, uh, it's that the, the displacement comes from uh, something being displaced from solution in most of these processes we have a metal and the activity of the metal the metal is, uh, in its zero valent form is going to displace the uh, oxidized form of, of something lower in the series uh, from solution is going to reduce it. And so uh, in that case it is going to come out of solution. It's going to go from an ion that's in solution into a metal in the solution. So that's where the displacement component comes from in this uh, name. So this would be probably Single displacement's not necessarily the most appropriate, but it is, it is in that category. A redox would be the best answer, but I'd accept this. So, either will do. And now, the third process we have actually is going to pretty much uh, uh, exemplify that. Um, we have option C. I have copper in the solid state plus silver nitrate in solution, equated. And so, uh, again, my tell here is that I've got uh, an element, a uh, pure element, in its uh, zero oxidation state as it's found in nature. So I have solid copper. So the, the only question now is, and is whether the, this metal, uh, cation, and, and the salt that occurs in the solution, is whether it is higher or lower in the activity series. If the metal is higher in the activity series, then the cation, cationic metal, the, the metal in the cationic form, then it will displace it from solution. It will knock the silver, it will reduce the silver into uh, metallic silver. And so I don't expect you to memorize the activity series. You'll be provided an activity series on the test. And if you'll check, um, copper is indeed above silver in the activity series. So copper is going to reduce the silver. And so that means I'm going to get silver out of the solution. What you might, may or may not know <clears throat> is that copper is going to do so in a two-electron process. And it's going to form a copper plus two salt. And so if you got that part wrong, I'll let it slide because you, you might not know that, that it always forms a plus two salt, the plus one would not be stable, uh, even though it does form plus one salts, but it's not stable, and so um, this is going to go to uh, copper, nitrate, and I'm going to need two of these. Copper nitrate, which is going to be in solution. The reason I'm going to need two is because silver can only form the plus one ion. It's one of the fixed charge metals. So we do know that much. And silvers can only be plus one or zero. And so it can only uh, uh, accept one electron at a time uh, from copper. So copper is going to have to produce two silver atoms. This 
deteriorates the process. The silver is displaced from solution. It's now in the solid state. And so the term single displacement was uh, most appropriately applies here. Although this is indeed, the one above it was indeed a single displacement. This one is uh, a single displacement or redox. So we can call it redox.